Section 3.3, we're solving absolute value, guess what? Inequalities. We've already solved absolute value equations, right? We know how to do that. We're pros at that. But now we're going to solve absolute value inequalities. Absolute value inequalities are very, very useful in production because you can, you can relate them to a tolerance or a margin of error, which is kind of what the real world situation is at the end. We'll get to that probably, probably on Monday. But we have to know how to work with them first. So um, I'm just going to show you how to solve them graphically. I'm going to skip all the words and we'll, we'll in, introduce the words as, as we see fit. So example one, it says to solve the inequality graphically. Here's what we're facing with. We have the absolute value of x plus 3 plus 1 is greater than 4. So first things first, how do we know it's an absolute value inequality? I spy an absolute value, do y'all? And I spy an inequality. Okay, cool. It says to solve it graphically. So here's what it means to solve graphically. You could treat, ooh, writing with a highlighter. There we go. I'm going to treat this like one equation. I'll call that y1. I'm going to treat this like a second equation, y2. And I want to graph these guys. So how would I graph x plus 3 plus 1? Well, I need to know a couple things, if you remember, to graph an absolute value function. First of all, I need to know where the vertex is. Where is the vertex if I move it left 3 and up 1? Negative 3, 1. Good. The next thing I need to know is does it open up or down? Which one does this do? It opens up because we have a positive in front. And then I need to know what the slope is. What's the slope? <clears throat> it's going to be plus or minus something. It, what's the magical number in front of X, whether it's outside or inside? It's implied to be a 1. Okay, so this graph was already given to us, but let's see why it's, it's correct. We go left 3, there's negative 3. We go up 1, there's the vertex. And then we go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. And there's that branch. And we go up one left one, up one left one, up one left one, there's that branch, okay? And then how would we graph y if sub 2 equals 4? Well, this graph has a constant, which looks like a what? It's a horizontal line that passes through 4. And it's already graphed as well. Here's 4 right here. All right, now if we were just solving this as an absolute value equation, the solutions would be the point of intersection right here. It would be negative 6, and it would be 0. And we'd be done. We would say x equals 6, negative 6, and x equals 0. And we would probably write it like this. We would list them like in, 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 in roster notation, and we'd be done. But it's not, an, it's not an equality. It's an inequality. So we have to think about what the inequality is actually asking us to do. If we translate it into graphical means, we want to know where the graph of y1, for what values of x, is the graph of y1 greater than the graph of y2? Now, if we're talking about graphs, we're talking about y values. Greater than means what? Above or below? This is the key word. What do you think? If it's greater than, you think it's above or below? Above. Yeah, it's above. That gives us something to look for. For what values of x, then, is the green graph above the black line? For what values of x is the green graph above the black line? Well, it's going to be related to the x-intercepts, okay? It's going to be related to those, those points of intersection there. The question is, is the green graph above that line outside those intersection points or between them? Here's where it's above, right? It's above over here where I'm shading. That's where the graph is above the line. Does that take place outside the x-intercepts or, or inside? It's outside, okay? So this is going to be, we're going to call this outside the intersection points outside the intersections. This is what we call our disjunction from last time. This is the or case. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say then that um, we'll do it in set notation. It's going to be the set of all x such that x is less than. Is it less than or less than or equal to? Well, that's going to be determined by this up here. If it's a strict inequality like this one is, it's going to stay a strict inequality. So it's strictly above when x is strictly to the left of negative 6 or when x is to the right of 0. It's outside the intersection points. That's where the graph is above the line. And if you're going to write it in interval notation, you're going to have to do this. You put x epsilon. That's kind of like saying the set of all x such that. I'll highlight the common pieces. The set of all x such that is the same thing as saying x is epsilon. That means x is in. And we would need to establish 
Here's, here's if you want to shade it on the number line, it would look like this. How far to the left do we go? Where do we start for our interval? We come in from where? Negative infinity. Up to negative six. And then instead of the word or, we put the union symbol, right? We use the union symbol. And then where do we pick up at? We pick up at zero with an open circle. And then it's everywhere to the right. So zero to infinity. Those two mean the exact same thing. This graph is above that horizontal line outside those x-intercepts. And that's it. Now, solving things graphically, as I mentioned yesterday or a couple days ago, it's very important that you get your graphs as perfect as possible. And it helps when you have little grid lines shown everywhere. It's really hard if you're just doing a quick sketch by yourself to get the exact values. It, it might not intersect right at negative 6. You might look like negative 5.3 or 5.5. But if you're asked to do it graphically, trust that it's going to land at a nice intersection of two integer values, okay? All right, that was our first one out of the box. So far, so good. Any questions? There's two more to go graphically. So if you're kind of unsure, let's see what happens after we work two more. All right, the next one. Solve this one graphically. Okay, I got it now. This is going to represent Y1. I'll do that in blue. And I'll say this is Y2. I'll do that one pink. OK, and I want to know where the graph of Y1 is less than the graph of Y2. Less than in this case means what? Above or below graphically? Below. Yeah, less than is below. So let's go ahead and graph Y1. What do I need to graph an absolute value function? I need the vertex. Where's the vertex for this function if I move it right to down three? Two, negative three. Good. Two, negative three. And does this one open up or down? Down? Why down? It opens up because there's a positive in front. And then what's the slope? Plus or minus what? There's an implied one there again. So we need those three things in order to quickly sketch an absolute value function. So let's go. They don't give us the graph this time, so we got to do it ourselves. Let's go to the vertex, which is 2, negative 3, which is right here. And then I just need to go up one, right one. And then I can draw the line through there. It's nice with notability because you can snap it straight. Just make sure you're passing through all those diagonals. And then I got to go up one left one, which again is nice with notability. You can snap it and make sure it goes through all those diagonals like that. It helps you be accurate. It helps you be exact. If you're not exact, then the, they don't intersect at the right spot. All right. Then the next one I'll graph in pink. What does the graph of Y equals one look like? Well, that's a horizontal line that passes through Y equals one. So snap straight a horizontal line. And if you need to adjust it a little bit, you can move it up or down. That's nice. There it is. <clears throat> and now it comes down to the points of intersection, okay? This looks like it intersects at negative 2 and at 6. Would you agree? They intersect at negative 2 and 6, okay? So if this were an equation, I'd be done just listing those. But I got to return to my inequality because it was asking me something. It said, for what values of x is the blue graph below the pink graph? Where is the blue graph below the pink graph? Is it between those intersection points or outside? In this case, it's between, right? I can clearly see the graph of the absolute value function is less than or below the pink graph between them, okay? So this is going to be your what we call a conjunction, not a disjunction, a conjunction, which is essentially the and case. And it's going to be your compound inequality. I'll show you what that looks like here. So for the set notation, we're going to say the set of all x such that. And then is it a strict inequality or does it include equal signs? It's strict, okay? So we'll say um, for, for the between, it's real easy. You go negative 2, x, and 6 in increasing order. You got your left intersection point. You put your x in the middle, and you got your right intersection point. And then because they're both strict inequalities, these are just both less thans. That's what you call your compound inequality. It's the three-parter. It's got a number on the left, a number on the right, and an x in the middle. When those are listed in increasing order, it should always, 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 never not always, be less thans or less than or equal tos. In this case, they're strict inequalities because that's what it is up above. And now if you want to write it in interval notation, it would just be x epsilon. And I would have from negative 2 to 6. And what would go around those two? Would it be parentheses or brackets? 
Are they inclusive or non-inclusive? Parentheses are non-inclusive. They're the wimpier of the two, yeah. So no equal signs means open circles. No equal signs means uh, parentheses, not brackets. And there you go. That's your conjunction. All right? So it depends on what the inequality states up here. That inequality can be given to you anyway. But what we're looking for graphically is essentially where is the graph either above the line or below the line, and it's always, always, always going to be one of two things. It's always going to be outside the intersection points or between the intersection points. One of the two. It's always going to be your disjunction or your conjunction. Okay. So far, so good? Well, we had one that was a disjunction. It was an or case. And then we had one that was a conjunction. It was the and case. Let, let's talk about that for a little bit real quickly. Why is this an or case? If you pick a value that works, it's either here or here. It's not going to be above. Like if you pick a number like negative 7, negative 7 is only less than negative 6. Negative 7 is not also greater than 0. It's one or the other. But for the and case, if you pick a number from anywhere in here like 2, 2 is both at the same time greater than negative 2 and less than 6 at the same time. Okay, it falls in the interval to satisfy both of them, so it's an and case. I wonder what this one's going to be. 50-50, huh? Let's try it out. Um, ooh, this is going to be good. This is Y1, and this is Y2. We need two things, three things, remember, to sketch this graph. I need the vertex. Where's the vertex of this absolute value function? We move it right one and up four. So the vertex should be at 1, 4. If you understand transformations, it's very easy to get that vertex because it started at 0, 0. Does it open up or down? It opens down. Very good. What makes it open down? The negative. And then what's the slope? Plus or minus what? What's the number in front of the x right there? 2. Yeah. That number right there that's in front of the x the magnitude of it, plus or minus, that's your slope. Okay, so let's go ahead and sketch that one. We go to the point 1, 4. And I need two points, one on either side. If the slope is 2, I go down 2, left 1, and then down 2, right 1. And now I can connect the dots. So if you notice, when I'm connecting these dots with a straight line, I'm cutting through these rectangles. So make sure you're going through those diagonals.
the classes the teachers have had in the six weeks.